Hi there, my name is Cameron Robert and I'm the Head of Technology at Datarati. Today, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to Interaction Studio and run through a couple of simple personalization examples that we use at Datarati to show you how quick, easy and powerful Interaction Studio can be in your business. So let's start with our website. Here you can see we have a simple website layout with an image carousel on top. However, there is no personalization. What I'd like to do is to make this site feel more personalized for our customers by showing an image based on their geolocation. For example, if you're viewing this page from Sydney, I'd like to show an image of a Sydney Harbour. With Interactions Geo deployed, we can log in and access the web extension to interact with the code that we have deployed on our website. To start with, we need to declare a space on the website for personalization. For this example, we're going to personalize one of the images in the carousel at the top of the page. Using the interface, we can declare a zone on this page by editing the sitemap's JSON data. Here I'm using Chrome to inspect the HTML code on this page to identify the element that I'd like to personalize. Once I have the selector address of the element I want to personalize, I can paste this into the sitemap and press save. And now that the sitemap is updated, I can go to the template view to declare the attributes of this personalized zone. Here in the template editor, I can use handlebars code to define variables in my HTML. The first thing I need to do is add the HTML content that I want to show in this content zone. For this example, I've inserted the div element that contains the background image attribute. Next, I need to define the variables that I'm going to use in this template. There is only one variable that I need for this example, which is the image URL. So I can create it in the server side code tab and I can even give it a display title to make it easier for our markers to use. And finally, I can replace the value of the static background image with the variable that I created using the handlebars code. With the web developer tasks complete, I can return to the Interaction Studio interface and set up an audience segment as the target for my new website personalization. Since I want to show a local image based on where you're viewing the website from, I'm going to set up an audience for each image location I intend to use. Here you can see that I'm making a segment for people who live in Western Australia who will be served an image of Perth. To do this, I'm using the Visual Rules Builder to define the criteria for the audience. Now that I have my segment created, I can make a campaign to join the personalized template with the audience target. For this campaign, I'm using an A-B test. However, I want 100% of eligible users to see the image, so I can just adjust the slider. Next, I can define the experience I want the users to receive. I can select the hero background image experience, which contains the single variable that I declared in the template screen. I can then paste the URL of the Perth image that I want the Western Australian segment customers to see. I can see the preview in real time to ensure the image shows how I want it to. And then I can click save and then publish. I can repeat this process three more times for the other locations. Brisbane, Sydney, and Melbourne. Looking good. Our website now has location-based personalization to give a more local feel for my customers. But where the real magic happens is when you connect Interaction Studio with Salesforce Sales Cloud and Marketing Cloud. So let's go back into Interaction Studio and create a connection into Sales Cloud. And then a connection to Marketing Cloud. For this next example of personalization in Interaction Studio, I'm going to create an activity that will trigger when a known customer clicks on the Learn More button on Datarati's SaaS Pay service page. So just like before, I can edit the sitemap to add a listener on the Learn More button. Again, using the selector code to identify the website element that I want to listen to. Next, I can set up a segment for this activity. Here, I want to target website visitors who trigger the SaaS Pay event I just set up and where their marketing cloud identifier is not empty. Interaction Studio uses APIs to send records into Journey Builder. So let's set up an API entry event into Journey Builder. With that created, we can now connect our segment in Interaction Studio with the Journey Builder entry event. Let's now jump into Salesforce Marketing Cloud and create a personalized email that we can send inside of our journey. We can then go into Journey Builder and plug in the Journey Entry event and drop in the email too. 
and since our Marketing Cloud instance is connected with Sales Cloud, let's also raise an opportunity event against the customer, just for good measure. And with the journey published, I can return to our website and click on the SaaS Pay button, which will add me into the segment and then into the Marketing Cloud journey where I receive my email. And since I added the opportunity activity in Journey Builder, the team can also follow up with me in Sales Cloud. How good! So there are just two really simple ways that you can use Interaction Studio to create web personalization and improved lead nurturing activities with ease. I hope you found this quick intro useful. Make sure that you reach out to your Salesforce account executive or contact us at Datarati if you'd like to know more about Interaction Studio.